Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about Jupiter. Specifically we're going to... Oh. Okay. Well, Jupiter is gone. That's not exactly what I expected. But anyway, what we're going to be talking specifically is various facts and various details you may have not been aware of that have been discovered in the last few years or so. And let's learn about the planet I just destroyed. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so here is Jupiter in all of its glory with all of its 67 known moons. This is the most massive planet in our solar system. It is ridiculously massive. It contains about 318 masses of Earth. And uh, if we were to combine all of the other planets together, they, uh, this planet here would still be about two and a half times more massive. Essentially, it's very, very, very big and extremely, extremely powerful in terms of having influence on our solar system. But there's a lot of things we've discovered about this planet because in the last uh, 30 or so years, at least seven different spacecraft visited it, this beautiful object. Starting, of course, with uh, the Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11 missions back in 1979. Then there was Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, which we actually do have in the game here under the, um, under the objects, I believe. There is both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, and you can actually even see them here um, in a kind of a historical way by typing Voyager and here is actually Voyager 2 uh, mission as it approaches uh, Jupiter. So both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 use Jupiter for the slingshot maneuver, uh, as, as the other spacecraft did as well, to basically accelerate uh, by passing behind it. So this is a very infamous maneuver that often used in astronomy in space um, to basically get a little bit of a boost, a little bit of extra speed. And so this happened in 1979 as well. Uh, then there was a Ulysses craft in 1992, I believe. Then there was Galileo, Cassini, and the last one was New Horizons that then went to, uh, to, to Pluto. And the eighth craft that is still around Jupiter today is Juno. The Juno mission is still active as of 2017 and is going to be exploring this beautiful planet for quite a, a while. And so um, what we've discovered with Juno mission and with the other observations is that, well, first of all, we've finally realized that unlike previously speculated, Jupiter doesn't actually have any um, hard core on the inside. And when I say there's no core, I mean that there's no any kind of a hard planetary like body on the inside below all of these, um, below all of this atmosphere. It was believed that there was something, but we've discovered that instead it has a very kind of a fuzzy mixture of layers of metallic hydrogen um, inside and basically the interior of Jupiter is very irregular. There's no sphere on the inside that uh, we thought there was. There's no um, any kind of iron core or at least uh, Earth-like iron core that we thought would be there. And based on gravity measurements from Juno, we've realized that it's very likely that it's just basically um, entirely composed of this fuzzy-like irregular um, hydrogen and helium. And that was uh, one of the more unusual discoveries. Um, and one of the more unusual confirmations of the last few years. We also know that it has the highest rotational velocity of all planets in our solar system. It rotates at about 12.6 kilometers per second, or 45,000 kilometers per hour, and it only takes about 10 hours to, uh, to basically complete one rotation. And because of this, uh, it's sort of shaped like a plate in a sense. So this way, it's a lot uh, smaller than this way. And as a matter of fact, its equatorial radius is about 4,600 kilometers further away from the center. So it's sort of flattened because of the rotation. Um, we also have discovered that the uh, clouds on Jupiter are only about 50 kilometers thick. So this is a very thin layer. The rest of the um, atmosphere below the clouds is essentially um, pure hydrogen and helium. And the clouds are usually composed of ammonia crystals that are broken into uh, two different decks. 
uh, that form different colors. So the darker material, the brownish material, is brought up from deeper inside Jupiter, and then it changes color when uh, the sunlight acts on it. And um, so below these clouds, there is essentially the rest of the helium and hydrogen, but above the clouds is various types of ammonia crystals. Um, now, this right here is known as the Great R Red Spot. Um, and the Great Red Spot is actually something that has been shrinking in the last few hundred years. When we first discovered Jupiter, the Red Spot was several times bigger. Now it's a lot smaller and we still don't really know why. But the interesting thing is that we actually discovered another spot somewhere um, on one of the poles right here. And this is uh, known as the Great Cold Spot and it's, it's about the same size as the Red Spot. The Cold Spot is kind of hard to see. It's only visible using infrared um, telescopes. Uh, but it is there and it's definitely um, or it definitely acts in the same way that the Great Red Spot does as well. And so that's something that's actually very unusual and very interesting. So basically there's at least one more spot which uh, suggests that maybe other gas giants like Saturn, Neptune and Uranus may also have these tremendously large um, storms similar to Great Red Spots that are only visible in infrared and are somewhere in other parts of the planet. Now, the important discovery of Juno was in regards to the magnetosphere of uh, Jupiter. So currently, if I actually enable the magnetosphere, you'll see that it's a tremendously large uh, magnetic field. It's actually the largest magnetic field in our solar system after, of course, the Sun. And um, up to now, we believe that uh, uh, this particular magnetic field was about uh, 5 Gauss in power, in strength. Um, it turns out that it's actually a lot larger. It turns out that it's actually almost double of that, at least 9 Gauss. And um, the actual strength of the magnetic field suggests that um, whatever is creating it inside Jupiter must be able to create these super powerful magnetic fields, uh, much, much, much more powerful than anything we have on Earth. Because on Earth, this is about 0.25 or 0.3-ish maybe maximum 0.65. So in other words, the magnetic field of Jupiter is like 50 times stronger than the magnetic field on Earth, which is very, very interesting. And also gives us an idea that maybe we can create uh, or find a way to create artificial magnetic fields using the same, um, same idea, same technology or same principles that the magnetic field is created on Jupiter. And this actually is very interesting because we also discovered that this magnetic field is not created the same way as it is on Earth. It doesn't come from within the planet. It appears to, that Jupiter's magnetic field is actually created on the surface. Um, and we don't really understand how it's created just yet, but we know that the magnetic field seems to be mostly made by the surface of Jupiter, not by the inside. Once we discover how it's created, we might be able to somehow uh, use this technology to create the uh, magnetic field on planets like Mars, for example, that definitely needs a magnetic field if we ever d decide to colonize it, because the atmosphere on Mars will not survive without a strong magnetic field. And this is Mars orbiting around Jupiter. And, well, apart from all of this, we also discovered quite a lot of other interesting things about the surface of Jupiter, specifically that it has lots and lots of various ammonia cyclones. Ammonia storms. Storms are, that are basically raging all over the surface. Not just this one, not just the cold spot, but even uh, smaller ones all over the surface of Jupiter. When I say smaller ones, though, I actually mean size of Earth about. So, like, this big. So, there are Earth-sized um, cyclones, Earth-sized storms, pretty much at all times on the surface of this beautiful, massive planet. And more so on the equator side than the polar side. So, the majority of storms actually occur right here. And, well, so far, these are the main findings from the more recent study about Jupiter. And hopefully this give you, gives you an idea how incredibly uh, mysterious this object still is. Even though we've known about it for like 400 years, more than 400 years actually, we've known about it since Galileo discovered it in his telescope, we, even today we don't really understand it very well. 
Some of the mysteries are actually very important for us. Like, for example, you know, how does this planet create this unusually strong mag magnetic field around it? If it's on the surface, what causes this particular magnetic field to, to be formed? Is it something to do with the ammonia crystals? Something to do with storms? Or is it something to do with the uh, metallic hydrogen right underneath the surface? And um, other mysteries maybe are not as important, of course. Like, for example, the fact that obviously this planet has a lot of storms. It has so much atmospheric pressure and so much atmosphere on the surface that you would expect it to have storms everywhere. But on the other hand, understanding what's inside Jupiter and what causes it to be so interesting and so dramatic would definitely help us advance the knowledge of potentially terraforming so that we can go on Mars which is orbiting around Jupiter and causing it to actually heat up because of the uh, various tidal effects and then maybe somehow terraform it. But maybe all of this will happen sometime in the future, definitely not in the next few years. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you learned something about Jupiter, about uh, our solar system and hopefully now you know what we know about this beautiful planet. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Let's maybe go into this here and slow down the planet making everything collide with it and cause a major transformation of this particular region of solar system if you haven't subscribed yet consider subscribing to this channel because there is going to be a lot more educational videos coming in the future and come back tomorrow to learn something else space out guys i'll see you later and as always bye bye